All right, I booked a load. Today's Saturday. Uh, February 13th. I booked a load yesterday. Yeah, let me... Wanted to tell you guys about the temperature. So it's minus 13. 8.6. Wow. 8.6 F. And the truck was sitting for three days. Look at this. <laughs> I had water in here. <laughs> and even I had water in my car. I was at a hotel, so I left this in my car. Everything is frozen. And uh, I'm just about to leave Cambridge, so that's the rest area. I wanted to go downtown, then I remembered that these guys sell a Starbucks. Hold on. So I got some snacks. I got coffee and I'm just heading, you see like I'm here. I'm just heading towards Hamilton and then Buffalo, Fort Erie, and I'm gonna cross, cross the border in Buffalo and I'm moving a light load from uh, Virginia so I hired a guy a big wrecker spent like an hour and a half outside in this weather so he flipped this and then I I disconnected the booster, just drove away, put some timbers under under that un dysfunctional uh, winch. But you know, it's only two pins in here, right? I was able to disconnect these with not too much hassle and drove away. And, the, and then the guy, I had the Jeep, right? And it was facing that way, so the guy... <laughs> lifted it very nicely because he used two chains and so one side was not sagging like it does when you use one chain and i said hey i don't want to drop the trailer hook back up can you please i'll hold the jeep can you please you know like turn around and put it in the spot facing this way and so <laughs> he did a couple of maneuvers with the jeep like this high of the ground and i was holding it walking back carefully and he was able like this is my spot right so he was able to go from that side and just backed you know it's so nice like i like his i like this setup the wrecker is uh so much better than than that crane that the crane guy i used before because this, again this guy has two chains right and his whole boom goes up and down and extends it's like very very nice you know and yesterday when i booked this load and i remember that i have the jeep on the deck you know i asked the guy my customer who is a excavator there right sitting next to my trailer i said hey can i use your excavator again and he says uh no unfortunately he says he found the buyer and the buyer already took a picture of the of the engine hour meter so he says he don't want to he can't afford to add um, any more hours you know and so I went to a John Deere over there that I usually use all right are we good to go yeah I got my ace uh, I got half a tank of fuel I still got lots of death I think we can go and so yeah I drove in my car to uh, to uh, no I called John Deere because I have that guy in guy's name saved on my phone I think his name's Alex yeah Alex because I remember just like my like my brother right my brother Alexander Sasha or Alex and so I say hey Alex this is uh, Sergey with the Kenworth you helped me a couple of times with the trailer and he says, yeah, what's up? I said, well, I booked a load, which is very light, so I don't need the Jeep, I don't need the booster, but I said, the Jeep is on the trailer. Can you help me unload it? And then we just put it on the ground, I'll drop the trailer, 
and I come back just with the truck and uh, and move the the Jeep and he says uh, when do you want to do this I said well ideally I want to do it Saturday I want to do it Saturday because because you know I was in nice clothes and it was cold just like now but you know somehow in the morning it's easier and he says well unfortunately no Saturday we all closed because of the long weekend I said son of a gun what what long weekend <laughs> and he says Monday Monday is a family day in Canada so he says normally we work on Saturday but this Saturday uh, we're not gonna work so he says uh, today Friday everybody's you know going home until Tuesday and I said okay I'll go try a uh, caterpillar there's a caterpillar next door it's like the, the place where I uh, unloaded recently right I went in there I said hey guys you know I'm a heavy hauler I, I bring machines to your yard pretty often can you guys help me and the guy says well I'm just the manager uh, I cannot just allow you to grab any machine you know and 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 do this because I told him I said I can do it myself you know I'll pay you just give me an excavator or something and he says well normally we have a yard guy yard person who can do this but he says today he left at three o'clock because of the long weekend and I said can I do it myself he says no uh, I said what about Saturday he says the same thing as John Deere he says uh, because of the long weekend we are closed uh, this Saturday son of a and as I was driving to the caterpillar I saw a big wrecker sitting on the side of the road and I look at the uh, sign on the door and when caterpillar told me no way we're not doing this so uh, I opened my phone and within two seconds I found the phone number for that company because I just googled them you know like uh, tow truck record service near me and of course yeah, my iPhone has uh, automatic automatic uh, location service as soon as I opened uh, the, the maps it activates location service so it knows where I am right so when I type in uh, a wreck near me it knows that I'm in Cambridge and so right away it shows me that these guys are actually also in Cambridge like a big wreck I wasn't even aware I know they're in London Ontario but it turns out they have some some presence in in Cambridge so I call them and of course I thought the girl would just say forget it Friday long weekend she says no what do you need done I told her she says hold on and I guess then she talks to a driver and then she comes back she says yeah we can do this because I told him I said I need two things uh, take off take off the Jeep and just put it on the ground and then flip my neck extension and she gave me a rate right away she gave me a rate she says that plus HST plus sales tax I said what about Saturday can we do it on Saturday and she said well on Saturday it'll be 50 bucks more I said that's fine let's do it nine o'clock Saturday and so I left my hotel eight o'clock uh, grabbed the coffee and went and put my those those yellow pants because again it's minus 13 or 8 F you know very chilly and it's moist you know you feel like moisture in the air and I went in I, I took the chains of the Jeep I disconnected the, all the hoses on the neck extension right and I, I and I disconnected all the uh, hoses and cables between the booster and the trailer in the back and I tried the pins in the booster they were all tight I could not get them out so basically I was ready for the guy and then I, I started the truck warmed it up and the gentleman showed up 
I think his name was Greg. Greg, just like my uh, maternal grandfather. My grandfather was Grigori. Grigori, Grisha, Greg. You know, that would be a cool name. I'm, I'm always envious of people that can move to a different country, like to Canada, and their name is easily transformed into an English sounding name, right? Like, like, let's say if my brother would move to Canada, which he does not want to do, uh, so he's Alexander, Sasha, was in Canada and in the US, Sasha, it's a girl's name, right? But in, in, in Russia, it's a, it's a guy's name, Sasha. Uh, or they can, and so Alex, right? He would come here, he'd be Alex, easy. Uh, Sergey, not so easy, but then let's say Greg, right? If I was Greg or Michael, Mikhail. So like I said, I sometimes I'm envious of people with uh, international sounding names. So anyway, this Greg shows up uh, with the big wrecker. Turns out he owns it. He says he bought it uh, used for 350 grand. <laughs> Canadian, he said, I said, how much is the new one? He says, oh, probably half a million, 600 grand. So he says he bought his uh, four years ago, 350K uh, 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 Canadian. And it's, it's, a, it's a K Whopper. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was T800. But you know, it's big. It has like four axles, it's extended. And there's the wrecker uh, boom on the back and has some kind of a twist twisty thing behind the cab he says that that uh, adds uh, cost and he, and he knew he knew exactly what he was doing so again the flip the flip box was challenging as always because it goes so high you know but he was able to do it and then I grabbed my I grabbed my truck. We had to uh, uh, drag the fifth wheel again because the fifth wheel on the truck was uh, in the far forward position. Uh, I wouldn't be able to hook up to the trailer. And so I hooked up chains to the front of the trailer and just moved the truck slowly, unlocked the fifth wheel, and moved the fifth wheel to the back. And then I hooked up and. Uh, and then I went in the back and I played with the suspension till uh, both pins on the booster were loose. And as soon as I put the air back in the suspension, one of the pins became loose, so I was able to take it out just like last time. And so only one pin was still tight. You know, it was seized by pressure. And so I put some boards under the under the jack the one that doesn't work but still you know it has the surface right so i put a couple of boards in there and then i dropped the i dropped the suspension i lifted again and the pin became loose so i got it out and then greg was watching the back as i slowly uh, just drove away with the tandem trailer and the jeep because there was not enough space. There was a truck on my on this on this side, and there was an excavator on this side. So he says, "Can you just pull to the middle of the yard?" And I asked him for a big favor. I said, "Can you please just turn it around so that it doesn't face the the field, so I can hook up to it later?" And like I said, I was holding the Jeep as he was slowly backing and just he put him himself in the position where he could just lower the Jeep in the spot where my trailer was sitting. And, uh, and now the, the neck of the trailer is pointing, pointing towards the center of the, of the parking lot so I can back to it. And, and when I come back, I'm just gonna drag it pocket in its usual spot over there in the front so yeah it took about 
maybe hour 15 hour 20 minutes but they gave me a fixed rate so which of course was not cheap but the guys work 24 7 you can call them anytime so now I have the number I know what they're capable of uh, I'm gonna use them again I told I told Greg I said hey I might I might have to call you I said you know disconnecting the boost uh, I, you saw it took like 10 minutes 10 15 minutes but I said the reconnecting uh, it's difficult by yourself it's pretty much impossible so I said I might call you I might have to call you to uh, to just lift uh, lift the rear of the trailer but yeah they're good guys you know I used to be in towing myself right so I respect these guys they they work very hard and on, on the weekend they on call that's why they charge more because you know they kind of like they're ready to roll uh, I think when, when I was uh, in this uh, it, it wasn't everybody it was just like one guy let's say one heavy wrecker was on call and then a couple of regular ones and they were rotating like let's say this weekend it's your turn to be on call and then another weekend it's your call and uh, of course on call means that so you have to be ready to roll they can call you anytime so you cannot drink you cannot smoke grass you know all that stuff that people do on the weekend so you have to be sober and <laughs> ready to work yeah I might need to stop I might need to stop at the pilot in Fort Erie and, and buy uh, some extra windshield wash because you see this so yeah very chilly weather and so I, I unloaded that big uh, piece right from the tunnel boring machine Tuesday right and I then I got paid uh, Wednesday Wednesday had money in my account uh, took care of some business uh, I had to open a, a, a new account at one at, uh, at the bank like a new bank I'm dealing with now because I, I only had a visa card but it was always a hassle try to pay the the what I owe on that visa because it's a different bank and so I went there I said guys come on I just just give me a basic checking account so this way I don't have to call you and spend 40 minutes on the on hold and so they opened the account so now I can basically I, I can grab money from my main bank go to this one put the money in the account and then I can go online and do it and do a funds transfer straight into my visa right so no need to call anybody anymore and it's a US dollar that's you know that's the issue because my visa I, I needed a visa in US funds and when you have a visa in US funds you cannot just pay do a transfer from another bank because you know I'm in Canada right so Canadian currency is Canadian dollars so when you have a credit card in foreign currency you have to, they won't even take cash if you don't have an account and so that's why it's either pay by phone and like I said it takes forever uh, they they hang up on you they're too busy and so this way I open an account it's like two dollars a month for the account and I, I can go anytime now and deposit money and just transfer to my to my credit card, right? Otherwise, before I used to I used to use my Canadian dollar visa, and then of course you know when you're in the states, there's all kinds of fees. You know they don't just let's say I buy a hundred dollars worth of fuel, right? And let's say the exchange rate 
is dollar uh, twenty seven. So hundred dollars US is hundred twenty seven Canadian. But they don't just take hundred twenty seven. First off, they 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 take like one point three five. Like the exchange rate is always much higher than they in real life. And then they add fees. So that hundred dollar purchase of fuel ends up costing me like hundred fifty Canadian. You know. And so I started using this US dollar visa. Uh, so now no more fees. But I, I, I ran into issues like how do you pay the balance? Because my main account is a Canadian dollars, right? So I know Americans don't care about this, but if you're like me, if you're Canadian and you, you know, and you uh, deal with two currencies, it's, uh, you might have issues, you know? And that's what I did, how I solved this little problem for myself. So now I can pay the bill and everybody's happy. And you see this stuff fly, flies right onto your windshield. And I didn't put on my my um, heater because I don't want my windshield wipers to start freezing and and so yeah so Tuesday I delivered right Wednesday I uh, I took care of some business and then Thursday I started looking for a load uh, in earnest and actually I saw people posting posting but they were either too cheap or one guy is trying to find somebody to take a heavy load to Alaska from Canada so 3500 miles one way and he's he's paying four bucks a mile for RGM so basically It'll be 7,000 miles before you're done because there's no loads out of there, right? So, and it's winter, it's very dangerous. There's no cell phone service over there. You need to bring uh, like a satellite phone. Because if something happens, that's it, you're done. You know, if a truck breaks down, like, I would never go to Alaska in winter. I never been there. I, I wanna go in the summer, but for some reason, well, I know why, in the, in the, a lot of, places over there it's all you know ice trucking right so there's no roads and so they try to ship most stuff in winter and another guy had the load three dollars a mile I think it was like 75,000 pounds you know like a RGN load for my trailer, I would have to bring the Jeep and this, and it's three dollars a mile, and it goes to Alberta, but not just like Calgary or Edmonton. It was going to uh, the very border of Alberta and BC. It's like 270 miles west of Edmonton, so pretty much right where the mountains start. So that's where it was going, and. So of course you have to count 270 miles back to Edmonton at least in your quote. And so I told this guy, hey, I said, your number is, you know, well, you don't want to say ridiculous, but your rate is a bit low. <laughs> so I give him a rate, which was like two times more almost. And this guy emails me back, he says, oh, your rate is almost three times more than what we get from other carriers and I'm like I said hey if you can find a guy who would do it for three dollars a mile going into the mountains in winter in the middle of nowhere a heavy load like it's a step that great I said I'm in Ontario I'm not I'm I do not I'm not based in Alberta like if I was in Alberta and I was desperate to get home I don't know I still wouldn't do it for three bucks a mile like I'm I don't have a step deck right like you know, sometimes I joke with this guy, I said, hey, if you want to really save a bunch of money, just find some, uh, uh, you know, 
guy from Asia, some Asian guy with a dry van. And if you can squeeze your excavator inside the dry van, they'll probably do it for like a dollar a mile, you know? Why are you paying so much? You're paying three, you're offering three dollars a mile? Come on. But basically that's that's the problem, you know, like when you when you're working off uh, load boards, like like a lot of people are under under impression that once you get a fancy truck and a fancy trailer, you just start you, you buy a big shovel and you just shovel money into sacks, you know, like gold. No. Most most brokers they don't care if you have a 20 year old truck or 50 year old truck you know they don't care that you pay uh, so much for your truck every month they don't care it's very very cheap like every load I'm telling you like very few loads I have I, I have had in the past where I just call and I say what's your what's your budget for a rate and the guy gives me a number and I say, sign me up. Like maybe one in 10, one in 10 loads will be like that. The others are, you know, what are you paying? Two bucks a mile, three bucks a mile. So guys, come on. What is this, a driving operation? Well, they just, they don't wanna pay, you know? So just having a truck and trailer means nothing. If you don't have, if you don't know how to negotiate with with brokers, if you don't have uh, sales skills, you're not gonna succeed as an independent uh, trucker. Because you need to be a salesman. You need to sell your service, right? You need to know how to promote. And so Thursday, I didn't have anything. I thought, okay, maybe I'll find something for Friday or Monday, nothing. Friday, of course, it's too late to find something for Friday, so I start. I started looking for Monday. I posted my truck on the on you know on the load board. You can post your truck as available, and I put in uh, uh, Monday 15th. And then my phone rings, and this guy says, um, "Hey, I have a load, you know, down south there, uh, not too far from Baltimore, but." It's 10,000 pounds. And I said, hey, I think you called me before when I was doing this other load. Yeah, when I was going empty to Wisconsin, I think he called me. And I said, I have a 60 ton trailer, you know? 60 ton, like I, I usually do like heavy stuff, big stuff. But I think I told him, I said, hey, if you still, if, if, if you cannot find somebody to move it in, in a few days when I'm back from Wisconsin, give me a call. And so he calls me Friday, the same guy. And I say, hey, how did you find me, by the way? And he says, Google. He says, I, I was looking for a Canadian heavy haul company. And he says, uh, you popped up on uh, in Google search results. You see? That's the best way for people to find you. Just like when I'm looking, like when I was looking for a wrecker, right? Like yesterday, right? I'm, I'm trying to find the wrecker. What do I do? I go to Google Maps and I say, a wrecker, tow truck near me. Right? That's how people find you. That's why I, I got rid of all this stupid Instagram and Facebook, you know, and now I just focus my my efforts on Google My Business and Google Maps, right? And so when I have an update, like I have a new load, I always post pictures because that's the, you know, the secret is you have to uh, um, uh, create posts on a regular basis, you know? If, because otherwise Google will start putting you like at position number 59, 97, you know, but if they see that you're posting updates, like, you know, I, I usually just, when I, let's say I'm gonna pick up this load, I'll take a picture and I say, hey, moving 
something uh, with a description this weight from this state to this state and I will add a couple of hashtags you know like Canada transport logistics tracking stuff like that and that's how people find you so forget Facebook forget Instagram that's all BS so now I only have I only work with Google doing these updates and I've always, of course I have a listing on Google Maps with my address there you know like if you search for me in Cambridge Ontario my listing pops up and I still kept uh, I still kept uh, Twitter but just mostly because you know I like photography and so that's just personal so I just let's say um, when two days ago right I went for a walk near the river there with my Nordic uh, poles and I took a picture with my iPhone I put it on the Twitter you know hashtag river hashtag landscape hashtag winter so that's just for fun and also my uh, my um, stock stock company where sometimes I upload uh, 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 pictures for sale uh, they on Twitter so they tell you what the kind of pictures they're looking for you know there's always some kind of uh, contests you know like picture of the month hashtag POM picture of the month and that's the, the only reason why I have Twitter oh and also I like uh, kind of like reading the news you know when you click on explore I just noticed this recently right you click on explore and you can see what what's going on which hashtags are active and so you click on that most popular hashtags and you can see a bunch of news stories I like that it's much better than when I, I would go to news.google.com you know like I, I like Twitter just to, to read the news So I hope I just tell you this guy so that somebody you know if you're if you want to start just don't make the mistake of thinking that once you have fancy equipment people are gonna start you know throwing money at you because it's not gonna happen and of course and secondly I, I do not recommend to go into heavy haul without experience with with at least flatbed step deck with chains with binders and ideally you want to move ideally you want to move a couple of oversized loads right just take it slow take it step by step don't just jump into like a 70 ton IGN after a reefer because you'll be in trouble that's how people get killed, people get into accidents, people knock down buildings, bridges, loads fall off, trucks end up in the ditch. can be treacherous it's kind of like reminds me remember those uh, icy roads in Michigan because it's now it's minus 8 a bit warmer so I think it's about probably 10 10 F This is the second time right I'm using my trailer as a tandem actually the wrecker the wrecker guy Greg says oh 
I know I saw a trailer like this. He says, you just have a tandem? <laughs> he says, we, we have heavy trailers ourselves. We do like trucking, right? So they have RGNs, but he says, all our stuff is uh, Trail King. And he says, they all uh, uh, try them. And I explained to him, I said, well, a trailer like this actually costs more than a try them trailer because it's more flexible. Because I said, you see these last two axles because he didn't even, he didn't realize that my, my last two axles were flip axles. And I said, you see that this way I can, I can drive, I can use it as a tandem, as a tridem, as a, as a, as a quad, or as a two plus two, three plus one, and I said, now I'm buying a flip axle. I'll be able to use it as three plus two. snowing that's not good yeah somehow I have to get rid of I have to get off this lane because at the bottom over there there's no tr there's a there'll be a sign no trucks guy is letting me in this guy moved there yeah, I see the sign no tracks over 6.5 meters which is like 20 feet and my truck is 30 feet long just the truck <laughs> plus the trailer Yeah, so it's a good thing that we did all this on stacking and decking. It wasn't snowing. Look at this guy. This guy is nuts. His front tire was on the on the broken line between lanes. What's he doing? Probably just talking on the phone or something. What? Hi. Probably a fan or something. They were showing me thumbs up. Maybe they just like my truck. guys definitely I think he's longer than 18 feet <laughs> but I need this lane middle lane because the right lane exits at the next junction and it goes to a shopping center but this lane you can either go straight towards Toronto or you can take the exit towards Niagara Falls and that's what I need I need Niagara Falls but like I said I'm gonna stop at the Flying J and get some windshield wash because this stuff will continue all the way all and especially over there on the US side because it's you know, there's all these lakes. You're gonna be worse. Yeah, I see this exit 99. 
Starbucks, McDonald's, Red Lobster, so that's the shopping center. I need this, QEW 403, and that's only this lane. in this weather yeah and in case you guys are wondering uh, why am I driving empty because I mostly have two searches on my load board I have two personalized uh, custom searches and one search is for loads from Ontario to US and another search is from US to all Canada like Quebec Alberta you know Ontario When there's no loads from Ontario but I see a load like this in nearby the US that pays good I'll just go there and this one of course goes to Canada because I, I I'm not allowed to to move loads between points inside US so once I'm in the States I have to go back across the border and so this load that I'm picking up goes to Ontario a couple of hours a few hours away from my yard but it's you know only 10,000 pounds legal legal width it's just a bit high it's like 11 feet 6 inches so they need a double drop Of course, they don't need a 60 ton RGN. They just need uh, any trailer where 11.6 will be legal. Wow, look at this. They didn't even, they didn't even clean it. Of course, the lake is right there. And that's where all this snow is coming from. So this is Hamilton, Ontario. Uh oh, I see a bunch of red lights in there. In the distance. Something happened. I just don't want anybody to hit me in the back. Oh, that's what it is. It's uh, snow plows. You know, sometimes they do a, a, a cool thing. They put four snow plows or three snow plows and they block all the lanes. <laughs> Which makes it super exciting for people. So you cannot, well, you're not supposed to pass them, right? But you cannot pass them, even, even if you want to, because they block all the lanes. And I'm loading Monday, so today is Saturday, so uh, I, I left so early because it's it's just over 600 miles like a thousand kilometers to my uh, shipper 
And so that's a bit too much for one day. So this way I'm just gonna go into New York. Shut down somewhere there. I need to take care of the of the mud flap on the truck. I'm not sure if I want to do it myself in this cold weather. But the truck stop I have in mind, they have a shop which usually is not busy on the weekend. So maybe I'll just, I'll be one of those guys, you know, that I don't like myself. I was joking about this before, but a guy would have one mud flap on one side says TA, on the other side it says loves. It looks weird, you know. We got lucky. See all the snow plows they took the they took those lanes. Collectors. This is the big bridge. We're gonna go over the what they call it? Sky Sky Bridge. But look at this guy. I don't know, are they freaking smoking something when they drive? Like, he goes like this and his tire keeps hitting the white line that separates out my, his lane from my lane. I'm always cautious when I see people like that because, you know, they can swipe you, you know, when they go past you. this is not slippery otherwise I'd have to start my 4x4 and differential thing so there's, there's water below on both sides and this bridge can be dangerous in uh, in high winds factories you know and steel mills the city of Hamilton and over here there's a lake Ontario and Toronto is this way now I'm driving uh, kind of like southeast towards towards the US border and from my yard I'm about 100 miles, 100 miles away, 160 kilometers away from Buffalo. Yeah, it's gonna be a long drive to the border. Well, the good news is that the border is still open only for essential essential traffic basically trucks only otherwise on the weekend there's a lot of Canadians that go across the border and there's sometimes big lineups but now it's much easier for the trucks to, to cross I see this? This is not good. Where's the snow plows?
this lane all these guys right four by four pickup trucks tow trucks they don't care there's snow ice we are invisible you know wait till you hit your brakes and see what happens Yeah, now there's no lane there's no lines i'm just following the uh, the open like black pavement now my truck it goes over into that lane but i don't want to go on the snow probably it's a good idea to turn on the lights This should this should end once we go past uh, past the lake it's all because of the water news before my battery dies uh, brother Alex had the operation and he, he posted a video on his channel and where he showed some uh, pictures you know the plate it's uh, titanium I guess he, he greased uh, he must have greased the dock pretty good because the guy gave him a titanium plate <laughs> and on the picture it's like this size almost like a foot you know like 30 centimeters so i said now you're gonna have alarms going off each time you're going through a metal detector at the airport and he says they're not gonna take it out it's gonna stay there interesting and he was already driving he did a video uh, he's still in Sochi in that resort on the Black Sea because he says he's uh, because he broke the shoulder on his right hand right arm he says he can move the fingers but he has trouble lifting lifting the hand and he was he was doing the video and of course it's he would not be able to drive if he had a manual transmission like my car so of course he has an automatic and he shows that like he's uh, putting it from park into drive with his left hand you know and then he drives like this and he can put like his fingers on the steering wheel because it's close to his leg but he cannot lift it like this you know so he he was pretty much driving with one hand and he says i'm gonna stay in sochi and the over here uh, maybe for one more week till the till the arm till i can raise the arm at least and so he's no longer in the hospital he rented uh an apartment and of course sochi is a resort so it's not exactly cheap I sent him a couple of bucks and he said he's paying so I know I sent him $90 Canadian it was 5,000 rubles and so he said he's paying 2,000 rubles a day for that so it's pretty much what uh, so 45 Canadian will be 2,500 rubles 
so probably 40 Canadian which is about uh, $30, $30 US so that's what he's paying 30 bucks a day but you know it's a modern modern apartment with parking with everything oh wow look at this another there's an accident over there cars are like this what the heck is going on oh yeah I think I think one car was in the ditch probably oh wow it burned there was a fire the, the car hit the guardrail over there now this is gonna be a mess go in the middle lane because these guys you know they're gonna be taking exits over here so yeah the brother's doing good but it was quite a fall you know it was quite a fall and what's interesting is that he said the um, the slopes where he skied before in near near Georgia they were much more dangerous you know like he says over here when he came to Sochi he just chose the easiest uh, slopes you know they're all color coded like I think green he was saying green is the easiest like for beginners and so this thing happened nothing happened to him on that sharp sharp you know down slopes in near georgia but he he broke his arm on a beginner type of a slope because he says there was a kid the kid that he almost hit or like seven year old kid and he flew out of nowhere and if he was just you know he was crossing his path like my brother was going like this and this guy came out of nowhere and if and my brother started breaking with his skis and if this guy just kept going everything will be cool but instead he just stopped and flipped around basically did like a u-turn on the spot and stopped right in the path of my brother and he was like a few meters away and there was nothing he could do he, so he started falling and he said his uh, skis went over the skis of that guy like he was bucked like this and he just tried to avoid hitting the small kid you know because he's over six feet tall you know uh, I don't know if you hit that guy straight on there would be a lot of broken bones you know and so he, he he leaned on his right side and he fell uh, very un, you know in an unfortunate manner and he just broke the top of his shoulder very bad spot bad spot for to fall onto okay you see here the snow disappeared and now it's only minus six so things are looking up and so I, I, I'm about an hour probably yeah hour away from from the US border and then all I want to do is drive another hour and a half and we'll probably shut down in uh, at the TA in uh, Dansville but I don't know might go further but I like that little truck stop because there's a big grocery store nearby and there's uh, there's a gas station across the street where 
diesel uh, is usually cheaper than a TA so I can just drop the trailer and go there and save a couple of bucks so we'll see Coolant is still okay. Yeah. All right, now we can go. This is a pilot, mile marker five. So we are five kilometers away from the border. Minus seven now, minus seven, which is way better than it before it was what minus 13. Twenty-one. 
Canadian. Dollar twenty one. Over there it's dollar nineteen. But it's dollar nineteen point nine. So pretty much dollar twenty. So that's pretty expensive. Keeps going up for some reason. cars just trucks like normally right before COVID like I, I, I told you there'll be a bunch of cars in here on the weekend going across but especially recently also uh, even before COVID actually it slowed down because uh, of the Canadian dollar it was like dollar 35 almost dollar 40 for one dollar US so uh, it's actually cheaper to buy things in 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 Canada 
Well, last time I checked, I think yesterday was dollar, dollar twenty-seven. So hundred U.S. dollars are worth hundred twenty-seven Canadian. So the Canadian dollar is becoming stronger, but it's still, you know, basically 27% cheaper than US dollar. And this this booth over here, what they do here is they, they scan my uh, transponder. See, they take my picture. So if you don't have the transponder, which is basically pays for the border crossing, they won't let you in. 